Ehas Club presents Stories to Create Podcast, where the tale of our guest takes you back, way back to where the story first got created. Now, to help create this new story, here is your host, Cornell Bunting. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome to another episode of Stories to Create Podcast right here at EAS Club. I'm excited uh, to have you guys uh, with us today. I'm your host, Cornell Bunting. Today on the show, we highlighting, listen, man, not just an entrepreneur, man. This, this man right here is making major moves in Southwest Florida and maybe close areas as well i you know we gonna talk to him about a lot of that what that look like but first we gonna get to know who he is you know i know him as my brother wes you know it's a beautiful thing sir wes i want to welcome you to the show sir appreciate you yes Thank man you. and and because you have some such of a, a french name yeah. i would love for you to tell the audience the full name and how you pronounce it and all that stuff. I'm not gonna tell you the full full name, <laughs> but I'll tell you the full name. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't want to get too Haitian up in here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so my name is Wes Musignac, and you have to lift up your chin when you say the last name. Musignac. Musignac. Yeah, it's not gonna come out if you don't lift up your chin just yeah, a little bit. You gotta lift it up yeah, a little just bit. Just a little bit. Musignac. Wes Musignac. Yeah. Yeah, that's serious. Uh, Cognac music. Uh, yeah. you, listen, I'm telling you, people, you hear that? That's dope right yeah, there, man. Yeah, that's a fire name. I ain't going to lie. I ain't going to hold you. That's listen, fine. that's <laughs> so <laughs> When you was in school and teacher be like, and they call your name, kids be looking too, innit? it? That's why, you know, I got to teach people to, to say it because, you know, the, the teacher's going to chop your name too. <laughs> Musiak? Is Musiak? Musiak here? <laughs> I said, no. <laughs> yeah, that, bro- that brother's not here. Yeah, but Musignac. Yeah, is he's here. Is here. here. There you go. <laughs> I love that man. So, for the listeners, man, um, take us back to where you were born, grew up. Where was that? I was born in Haiti, in Port-au-Prince. Okay, the slums of Haiti. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> well, Port au Prince is <laughs> yeah. the slums of Haiti. I, don't I, don't, I mean, a lot of people. Were book, right? I just turned them on just now. Ooh, the slums of Haiti. <laughs> That is that riveting. Is, Tell me more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> I, I like that. Get the that. first two words out. I know. My goodness, I love it. Uh, but yeah, so I was born in Haiti, Port-au-Prince. Uh, grew up there until about eight. Uh, then I was transported into America mm-hmm. uh, via my mom, who was already here. Yeah. Not living her best life, basically struggling as a black woman in America. Yeah. And you know, not speaking the English language mm-hmm. like that. Uh, made a way for herself. Uh, she was doing housekeeping here, bought a home, yeah. uh, and you know, basically, you know, brought me and my sister and my pops over while she was here, making her way uh, yeah. life for us. So, um, so I grew up in the South Bronx, New York. Uh, you know, did my um, education there. Um, at some point, uh, you know, in life, I ended up in Florida. You know, yeah, the land of make believe. Make believe. <laughs> <laughs> Let, so, so, but, you know, before we dive into when you got to Florida, you know, because you, so you left Haiti when you were eight. Eight, a thousand years ago, yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> school life, you know, because that's a, a a young age. There, you you're in like primary school. You got to do some primary school over there. No, I think it's primary streets. You know, I told you it's the slums. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I did some primarily uh, primary school, but I vaguely remember. Yeah. Uh, such a long time ago, uh, school was not consistent for me. Yeah. Uh, being a poor person uh, yeah. that lived in a, a society like that, where yeah. at that time, where I was growing up, uh, we had this uh, militia called the Tontamaku, and then they'll go around, you know, taunting the uh, the community, uh, yeah. killing people, beating them down, oh, man. Uh, burning the place up. Yeah. So it was a crazy time. Uh, wow. Not a time to uh, remember yeah. all the good times. Perhaps I had uh, right. at that time because I was so distracted by devastation. Yeah, so man, man. That's yeah. that's uh, that's Port-au-Prince. Yeah, uh, and Port-au-Prince. Um, 
as far as I'm hearing, it's still the same way. It's still the same and, now. You know, um, and it's a system. It's a design. It's yeah. set up for, for it to be that way because, um, you know, uh, it's an opportunity for uh, those outside of that country to take advantage of the chaos because, right. you know, I watched Game of Thrones. They say um, the ladder to success is chaos. Yes. And they create that ladder to success in Haiti. They, you know, I go over there and take all the benches, all the resources, and leave the people to um, fend for themselves. Fend for themselves, man. It's so bad. But um, yeah. so that that kind of memory, you know, motivates me, you know, knowing that my uh, mom was in the streets of New York. At some point, she was homeless. Mm -hmm. um, and I vowed to myself to never uh, go broke or never uh, put myself in position to be homeless. So growing up in uh, New York, I would get all sorts of uh, licensing, whether it's uh, you know bartending, security, fire guard. Um, you know, I used to put dish, you know, direct TV yeah. dish on somebody's roof. I, I did a bunch of stuff. I oh, acquired man. a lot of licenses. Yeah. Um, you know, my latest license that I got now is life insurance license. Yeah. I'm able to help somebody get the life insurance. So I was like, I've always been consistent in trying to, um, or putting myself in a position in a way where I can, you know, never go hungry or never... Um, have an opportunity to fend for myself because, right. you know, I acquire all these skill sets. Man, man of many trades. So I'm an entrepreneur. Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> my passion, uh, my wife hates me. Uh, because... <laughs> where, where, where that go say she oh, hates you? No, no, you, you I know, said it in a, in a lovely way because yeah. as an entrepreneur, you have to have a focus. Uh, you have to be determined. Yeah. Um, you know, no one's going to know um, what's inside of you, what's burning. Right. And they're not going to get it. They're not going to understand it. It is it is what it is. But right. as long as you make sure that, you know, you take care of your family, you are uh, seen and are there and heard um, when it's time to take care of your kids. Um, I believe as long you are um, establishing that yeah. and making that concrete, um, that's your foundation, and you yeah. can go out there and, and truly conquer. I, I love that, man. It's uh, now so in New York. So you were in New York for you know most of your teen and <clears throat> what, early you early twenties. No, I was in New York for most of my life. Okay, um, you know I started my entrepreneurship there. Um, you know I started with. Um, you know, doing, you know, fixing people's credit. Uh, I was a beast on that. I was helping people do that, change their lives around, put them in position to acquire funds, yeah. whether it was personal or business. So I made a lot of money uh, in New York. Um, you know, I was pushing the big whips back then because I was that mentality, you know, you yeah. have to show up and show out. Yeah. And I was attracted to acquire more clients and more customers to um, buy into your business. Right, right, right. Uh, I'm not about that lifestyle anymore. Yeah. It's there, you know, yeah. but... I've, you know, I've been there, done that, actually, yeah. you know, at nice little bends. Yeah. It's 550. <laughs> uh, moving around. Yeah. Smooth. <laughs> but now, uh, you know, I drive a Toyota Camry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all about family, baby. Yeah. It's all about, all about the family. So I got so bigger, you, bigger fish to fry now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's when, once you get to a point where you, you understand mm -hmm. the assignment, I think, you know, the, the material stuff is not really a... No, nah, it's, it's it's frivolous things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not taking it with you when you go. This is true. Uh, so you create moments with friends, family, um, you know, colleagues and business partners, and um, hopefully you can make an impact Yeah. not only within your family but within your community. And when you leave, your spirit is still around. Yeah. Um, I believe in establishing that kind of foundation. Yeah. I I love that you say that, man. You know, when you were saying that, I was remembering a thing my grandma told me a long time ago. It was a it was a funny story because she said, you know, there was this lady that you know feared her husband, and her husband make a lot of money, and mm -hmm. he was all about his money. Mm -hmm. And he's like, "Listen, you better make sure when I die, all my money go with me." <laughs> that's, 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 I need it. In yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how in serious hell. he was about his money. And you know what she did? She wrote him a check for all the money that he had and put yeah, that, put in, that in, check in there. <laughs> what craziness. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can take it. I'm just going to yeah, write yeah. you a check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to bounce, but it, it'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> but she, she, you know, she did what she was told. Right. So she didn't she have to. Yeah. She honored him. Yeah. 
Yeah, in a frivolous way. Man. <laughs> so, you know, one of the things, man, a lot of people admire about the Caribbean is, you know, our ancestors, you know, that what those stories look like back at, how was it like for like with you and your grandparents or you know uncles aunts well um i don't know my grandparents um my my dad was my grandparent because um he was 90 years old when he married my mom he's a haitian that's Whoa. what they do yeah <clears throat> i mean i'm i'm adding um you know I'm exaggerating. Yeah. I'm adding characters to this thing. But yeah. It was quite old, though. He was, he was grown. He, he was a grown man. He would be 111 years old right now, um, you know. Yeah. He, hadn't he passed uh, right. somewhere in 2011? But he was older. Yeah. Um, so I, there's no way I was going to know his uh, parents. Right, right, like right. I was there since, uh, you know, the beginning of times. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so my mother, on the other hand, she... Um, yeah. You know, you know, it was scattered. She has a big family, you know, big uh, land and uh, family. Uh, my grand grandpa is like a land owner, business person, had cattle and yeah. So she had wealth on her on her side, and she knew like the courts, the judges, and things like that. Okay. Uh, but you know, the country is not stable for people to sustain, you know, their status. So right <clears throat> when things scattered, when he passed, I guess she had to fend for herself and. You know, her and her brother made their way to America and did that thing. Yeah. Um, but I don't know grandparents. Yeah. You know, I know my um, my wife's grandparents. Hey, they're really good people. I yeah. see how grandparents could be loving. There you go. Caring for the family. Uh, and you need that, again, another foundation that can keep you level in life. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I think a lot of people need to understand what that look like, man. But. You know, with that, you know, we wanna we wanna journey down into Florida. What was when you decided to leave New York? Mm -hmm. Was Florida your first choice? Yeah, uh, Flo Florida always been that choice. Um, you know, you're thinking about the the weather, the blue sky, the open sky, the palm trees. Yeah. Um, you know, you get to be outside 99 percent of the time. You know, due to the good weather here, and you know, when you're living in New York, you're thinking about you know, how gloom the sky looks, how dark it gets early, and how cold it is during the winter time. Um, you know, floods by it's walking in snow, shoving in snow, oh, uh, things like that. So, yeah. you know, I'm surprised I did it for that long, as long as I did. Right. And then uh, my wife was like, um, think about this. Why shovel snow when we can shovel sand? Ooh. I said, you, you damn poet, let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she was poetic. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, we, uh, we, we got out, you know, we got, you know, we rallied the troops. Uh, when we came down here, we uh, we came down here, we brought down four, four families with us. Wow. So we brought down four families. There was about probably 15 of us. Uh, then, you know, more families came down. It's probably about 40 of us now. Wow. And the last people that made it down here was the uh, my in-laws, my grandparents. Yeah. And, um, they last month they showed up here. Yeah, you know, they got a you know home in uh, somewhere in North Fort Myers. Yeah, trying to enjoy this weather as, um, as well. That's and, and be closer man. to the grandkids. Wow, you came in forty deep. <clears throat> they were pretty deep. So no new friends. <laughs> no new friends. <laughs> no Keep new friends. Circle clean. <laughs> I love it. <clears throat> I love it. Now you know you you hear you kind of see the flow of things going, and I think you know in Southwest Florida they got like this. Uh, art vibe where you have a lot of artistic individuals uh, and then of course there's a lot of realtors as well you know how did you feel when you came and just kind of see what kind of I mean, I thought crowd I was gonna, you were dealing with I thought I was going to take my business to, this, uh, to the next level when I got down here I realized it's this, there's no gray areas because when I was in New York I was flying high with entrepreneurs, uh, you know, that was trying to come up, or that was already there, and I was helping them fix their credit. I would help get them funding, get money, and they had a desire to do that hustle to, you know, come up, you know, yeah. and do their thing. Whether they're getting a mortgage for a house, whether they're getting money to scale the business, whatever, I was helping put them in position to do that. Coming down to Florida, it's like nobody has any desires here. <laughs> you either are, are old and asleep. And you're about to die, <laughs> or you're slaving on plantation, oh on Plantation God. Avenue. Oh my goodness! And um, you're working hard. 
So the in-between where I'm looking for the entrepreneur that's like looking for things, I don't find nobody. Yeah. So I said, you know what? I got to buckle down. I got to. So I went around the whole entire town. Yeah. I met everybody. I told myself I was going to meet a thousand people, shake a thousand hands and, and build my network. Yeah, <clears throat> but you know, and I did, and I did a lot of that. I joined a bunch of chamber, uh, chamber of commerce, uh, North. Um, I mean, uh, Fort Myers Beach Chamber, um, the you know Cape Coral Chamber, right? Uh, pay, uh, you know, the United Haitian American Chamber of Commerce. Uh, you know, there was a probably a couple more. The Lee County Chamber of Commerce. Oh, you you joined I, them all. I joined them all just to build up my network. It yeah. was like, man, I got to find these entrepreneurs that that all I need. Yeah. And even getting in there, these people didn't need anything. They yeah. they were just bouncing around from network to network meetings and and still trying to do the same thing and trying to establish something when <clears throat> they can go ahead and get capital and, and build that business. Forget the network. It's just get your money and, and elevate this thing. Yeah. So it's like, oh man. So that's why I created the when I got down here, uh the community press, which is the newspaper that's down here for uh, Dunbar community yeah, yeah, and yeah, Beehive. Yeah. They were going out of style. I said, why is this uh, black owned business going going out of business now? And yeah. I found out that the, the, the owners were older, they was done with it, they had a passion to do that for the community, but they didn't have enough muscle and, and fire anymore. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? <clears throat> Let me go talk to them to see if I can take that over. Yeah. Um, so I, w- I went to talk to, uh, I believe he's, James, uh, you know, the owner for that paper. Right, right, right. Yeah. And I was trying to, and he was excited about where I came from, my background, and the fact that I had a vision to run a newspaper. They, he was like trying to hand this thing over to me, but something happened along the way that was a delay. I'm like, I'm not going to be delayed on anybody. Let me create my own thing. And that's how the, the Kingdom Press yeah. news uh, yeah. got born. The Kingdom Press at kingdompressnews.com is my mm-hmm. online newspaper mm-hmm. that I provide for the community to bring awareness of what's going on and what's affecting us negatively or positively in our community just to have that means in order for us to communicate and <clears throat> empower one another and know where the resources that we are needed so much in order to thrive out here. Right. So a lot of that, you know, is on kingdompressnews.com. I, you know, basically created a hub. So I was doing articles for all the business people that I met. Um, I think I even did an article on you at some point. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So entrepreneurs, business owners, and that's how I was you know, establishing my relationship with folks out here and, 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 and started to, uh, to gel mm-hmm. with the community. The community uh, now knows me a little bit more. They know that I'm, you know, I'm cool. I'm honest. Um, you know, I'm not here to uh, shape or create any wave. If anything, I'm here to uh, add positivity and add, add value to the add community. Add value to, uh, to the community. Yeah. Um, so I established that, <clears throat> and that was a way for me to promote uh, myself as an entrepreneur, a lifestyle manager who was who was helping people with credit funding and things like that. Right. So as an entrepreneur and a, and a, and a person with spirit and passion, you know, uh, your business will take different turns and will find its way. And I'm realizing now more than ever that uh black people need each other. Yeah. And we need and we in this community is crabs in a barrel. Everybody's trying to bring people down because this is what they know. This is the makeup of America's fabric. So it's like it's in our DNA to take each other down because it was set up that way. Um so we don't really have a leadership that can we look at and be like, yeah, he's doing it this way and it's working and all the people are here. Let's do it. I don't see any of that. Yeah. So that's that's why I'm at where it's like if if no one's gonna lead, you know, because you know a true leader knows when to lead and know when to follow. Mm-hmm. I'll take the lead, mm-hmm. and in my journey, if somebody else can carry us further, I'm gonna follow that. Yeah. But yeah. we just have to be aligned with each other. There can't be no hate, no jealousy, no things like that. So right. <clears throat> and that's where B Jolly comes in. Yeah. Yeah. Be jelly, man. That's 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 pretty dope, man. I mean, you guys are seeing the shades right now. It's in the hat. Right oh here. yeah, you got the Be hat jelly, going, yeah. man. It's, uh, it, it, it's it's beautiful, you know. As as you can see, we're we're endorsing the product. Yeah. As we speak, it's amazing. Um, Bejellyshop.com. Yeah. B e j u l i shop. Dot com. Com, man. You better know how to spell <laughs> shop. Man. I ain't gonna do it for you. Yeah. Man. I don't care if I miss that. <laughs> I like that. So, the kids, your wife. Now you're saying like, 
too busy or you have found a balance where you understand the time that spent with them and then the time that you put into the work? Mm-hmm. Um, still, still finding, uh, trying, trying to fine tune the balance. Yeah. Uh, as entrepreneurs and, you know, and you you know you want to leave, leave behind a legacy for your children and your children's children. Um, and some may not get it, but um, so you get you may get carried away. Right. And you have to remember that um, if you don't build and continue, um, you know, watering the plant, the flower, so it can grow healthy. Same thing with your family. You have to remember to do that. Yeah. Pour into your wife, pour into your kids. And, um, you know, I'm still in the workings of yeah. that. And I'm still trying to make those things better. But, you know, when you understand what's in my heart, um, you know, okay, you know, we have to be somewhat patient. But definitely uh, it's it, be, it could become a struggle because, you know, at the end of the day, no one's going to do what you want to do, uh, not only for yourself and family, and maybe no one will get it. But you have to still have the courage Right to go after that that passion that dream mm-hmm. because um, if not you you would be regretful yeah, yeah. I don't want to be regretful right but I also don't want to lose family neither yeah 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 you know you yeah. gotta think about what's most important when everything's all said and done who's gonna have your back right right who's gonna be there for you God forbid in my journey you get hurt and somebody needs to be there and, uh, to fend for you right. Uh, what are you going to do then? You're going to look back and realize there's nobody behind you next right, to, you to right, help right. in that situation. That's where you got to find a clean balance and really approach the situation in a way where everybody wins. Yeah, I, I like that. <coughs> um, we're, so, we're, we, you know, we're in a space right now where a lot of people are still trying to figure out their their best, their next best move mm-hmm. and what that look like. And, I think for people that don't necessarily understand what their purpose is, mm-hmm. that's a challenge for them. Yeah. But then there's those individuals that maybe feel like they're walking in their purpose, but not necessarily understanding what is the next best move. You know, what would you say, man, to a lot of those individuals that are feeling stuck? Because, you know, they feel like they're doing something that they were put here to do. Well, when you're stuck and in a rut, I'm going to say read. <laughs> and I like did that. from somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I like <laughs> you know, that. There's, there's, uh, there's opportunity in that. Because yeah. the more you read, the more opportunity you create for yourself. Mm-hmm. Because you start seeing things and you, know, you start seeing the bigger picture. You mm-hmm. start seeing a testimonials from others that uh, went to a certain path and they went towards a certain direction and then they got diverted to another direction. Yeah. And so ultimately they found their way and they uh, came to a purpose. You could have started when you're 20 and you wouldn't find your purpose until you're 50. Right. But if you didn't go through that journey and go through that path, you would not have been molded or been created to when you did get to 50 to uh, have a true purpose because mm-hmm. now you see everything clear. Right. So just keep going, keep pushing. Learn, yeah. read, yeah. educate yourself. Yeah. Uh, when things are slowed down, take time to acquire the information that's need- needed. Yeah. Get a skill set to sustain yourself and, and have that foundation. And it's going to click at some point. Right. As long as you have a passion. But if you don't have no passion uh, for whatever you're doing, then it's going to fizzle out. Yeah. And it's, you know, you're going to do it. You're going to say, oh, I see this guy doing this. He's getting, he's getting money on it. He's getting... And, you get in there and realize you're not as successful with that person because you have no passion. Yeah, yeah. But if yeah. it's in your heart, you have a burning desire to do something great, it's really mm-hmm. about doing something great no matter what it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if you, you know, you can't do greater things if you aren't doing great things already, right? This is true. This is very true. So you have to be doing great things. Yeah. And greater things will happen as you are doing great things. They may lead you in any direction and whatever whatever that your passion is ultimately your passion is going to take you in that path, whatever that path is. Right. I know you, you know, you said, you know, because of just how the family was coming up, you wanted to make sure you figure out a way to not have your family in a situation. But what was school life like when you came to America? Like, like you got to New York. Did you do, 
did you do a lot of school or? Oh yeah, so <clears throat> when I got to New York, I knew no English. So because I knew no English in a, a English speaking uh, community, right? I really had to uh, learn the language in order to communicate. The first time I got to school, <clears throat> I was in third grade because I was eight years old. Um, I remember being chased by this young little girl who was my age. I didn't know, I, and I had no idea why she was running after me. I saw her coming towards me, and I just decided to run. <laughs> you took I off. Ran, and yeah. I ran out of breath. And when she got to me, she said, hi, I'm Maria. Wow. I said, what? <laughs> <laughs> you wasn't trying to harm me? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, you know, so I didn't know, I didn't know what to even say to that person. So yeah. uh, that put me in a position of, like, um, uh, lacking power, I guess. I, didn't, yeah. I was like, damn, I can't even say what's my name, what my name is. So it literally took me three months to get the English language because I went on a, I went on a, a tangent yeah. of learning the language. Yeah. Um, and I went, I, I studied, uh, we went word for word. I have my cousins who came around, we was going like, we had class every day, every night, just you know, being on the couch, learning the language, learning the language and pushing myself. And I think uh, that summer of 86 or 87, whichever year it was, I learned the language and it was about three, four months. I was like almost fluent in English. That's beautiful. Man. Yeah. Oh, wow. That, that is awesome. And so that's growing up as a, you know, a person that's in elementary, my high school. Yeah. I had a lot of fights. I had to fend for myself, being different, still with an accent. Uh, but I was cool though because yeah. my brother, you know, who was already here, paved the path for me and they respected him. And ultimately, I got that respect. So I was one of the cool kids in school. That's cool. Um, you know, I made it out. Uh, for some reason, I wasn't um, the best in school, but I was good in school yeah. enough to, um, you know, graduate early than my, you know, uh, you know, peers. students, yeah. my peers and everything. I'm like, yeah. wait a minute. I knew I wasn't doing better than you. Why am I leaving high school <clears throat> early at 17? Because those people that was there 19, like, yeah. You know? So I got to college, you know, my, um, you know, I went to community college and I was at 17 going and 18. Yeah. But when they, when I think back, I'm like, that's that was pretty early because not a lot of people make it to college at that age sometimes right, because right. they get let back or they've been slacking, whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, I was chasing females at that that, you know, in, yeah. in high school. You know, I had a nice girlfriend, but um when she went away when she went away to college, you know, um I got to playing. Yeah. I was a little pimp. There you but, go. <laughs> but it, it was life's over. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean like I said, I, did, I have always had that mentality of not being broke. Mm-hmm. I went and got all these licenses. Um, I went and got all these trades, and um, to make sure that I couldn't always fall back on something. Yeah, yeah. My I education. Like that. So you never got into any sports in school. Um, I played basketball. Basketball was my thing. Uh, I think okay. there was no. I mean, I played football. You know, community football with friends. I played baseball. I was happy with those things. But basketball, I had a mean crossover. Believe it or not, I may not not look it. But I was dunking. Ooh. I had, you know, I, was, I used to work on my legs and I used to dunk. It wasn't a crazy dunk because I yeah. got over just to put you, it in there. You got enough up there. Enough, enough up there. And for a guy who was like, you know, 5'9", five, 5'10", five, um, you know, I worked on myself. And, but ask me to do anything like that now. Not happening. Just, just shoot me. <laughs> <laughs> it's not happening. <laughs> yeah. So now your relationship with mom, what does that look like? I had a good relationship with mom. I think, I, I think, um, well, I would say I think, but my sister would say, yeah, you was my favorite. I think it's a middle child thing. I was always kind. I was always there for my mother when she needed to go to, you know, hospital. Yeah. I'm always, I was probably the one that will be there um, and all through it. It's like I was the one uh, yeah. that was focused on that, whether it was my father who needed it at the, at the time before he passed. Right. And my mother who needed whatever. Uh, so I had a good relationship with my mother. She you know, she gave me everything that she needed. She's the one that, uh, you know, provided a life where I can be who I am now. There, is there any type of <clears throat> Haitian music that you remember that you guys <clears throat> played a lot in the home? No, nah, my mother, uh, she, uh, as soon as she left Haiti, um, she just became this person here. She was a Haitian woman in America who just left Haiti. She, yeah. she never went back. She never looked back. 
no music was played. She was focused about, she was basically about sustaining a life mm -hmm. for us, hardworking, you know, come um, leave uh, the house early, come home late type of life where, you know, between her and my dad at the time, you know, they, found, they found a way to uh, fend for us. But there was no music playing. It was just hip hop, hip hop music, yeah. American music. Growing up in that space, um, I can't tell you anything about Haitian music. Um, even though, you know, growing up in college, I have friends that play the music. We enjoy it. I dance it. But, I, you know, my focus is I always had a focus on trying to win out here. Yeah. So it was it's like I wasn't really about music. And I don't know if I know of it. And if I hear it, I'm like, hey, that's my shit. That's my name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for me to be specific with the names, the artists and. Right. Mm -hmm. I enjoy the music. I dance. You know, I move to it, but I'm not one of those um, avid uh, music people that's following a certain thing. So some would say, because you know, when you when you when you're talking all that, I'm thinking of like you know, in my eyes, I feel the biggest band that came out of Haiti and just made it huge in America was uh, yeah, Fuji's. Well, <clears throat> that's in the mainstream. <clears throat> that's not even a Haitian band. That's or American. just the individuals are from yeah, Haiti. Yeah, that's just, that's an American band. But I'm thinking you're gonna go along the line of like you know, uh, you know, Carry Me. Uh, Carry Me is pretty big. Yeah, real yeah. big. Yeah. Uh, there's another one, T Vice. Yeah. There's another big one I can't put my hand on. Yeah. But they were a young group. They had a whole entire band. They went around Haitian community, yeah. country, um, out of the country, and they did their thing as real. Haitian music, Haitian language music. Yeah. And the Fuji's is just, uh, you know, incredible that uh, our people can do something in, in, in such a big league. Right. You know, being a worldwide entertainment group. And the Fuji's, when they were doing it, they were the biggest thing out there. Oh, I was yeah, proud man. to be Haitian with them. You yeah. Know, and the fact that we out there like that. But yeah. our people's like that. Yeah. We're big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're passionate. Yeah. You guys, you guys do a great job in a lot of what you guys do. So mm -hmm. I, I really like um, a, a lot of that stuff. And you know, they say music is really powerful. And and I super. I I for at at some point I was hoping that you know the big musicians would have find a way to to bring peace to poor the pins, like where they could communicate with those rebel leaders. Yeah, it's like. People don't want to mess their money up, and that's the problem. They're not willing to let go of their money in order to do something righteous, something yeah. just for yeah. the community. Think about what hip hop is able to do for the world, right? And the people that create that thing can't get a dime out of it. And yeah. if they do get the money, they are prevented from doing anything for the black community. Right, because there's, everything's by design. Think about all the wealthy people that we have that can actually come together and create an entire community. They can literally go buy a thousand acres of land and create a whole community that thrives bigger and better than the Black Wall Street that we have. Right. With more security, with militia to be out there, military to be out there protecting those properties. Yeah, why you know, we can't do that? As people with money already. Yeah. And you have money and you go get the talent that's beneath you. Not necessarily beneath you, but that's in the community that's doing an amazing thing. Right. And just put them on a pedestal, you know, and just fund them to create, to be there for the community. Right, right. You know, some would say once money comes in play for a lot of individuals, <clears throat> they change. <clears throat> they, they don't necessarily focus on what their peers were hoping that they would have focused on? Why you think a lot of individuals go through that where they they do a mind shift after the money comes? We don't know what, soci what society uh, is out there. Yeah. The, the Illuminati type of beings that approach these people once they get a certain capital yeah. uh, to deter them from doing something for the community. Right. We always been shut down. It's like there's a there's a spiritual force that's out there that's, that gatekeeps yeah. us from climbing to the mountain. Right. Because they because if they allow <clears throat> if they allow black people to be who they're gonna be, be the supreme being that they have the ability of being, right. We're so past every single thing out there. Every yeah. single being. Think about 
how great we are and everything that we do, every challenge, every yeah. hurdle, every yeah. barrier. Yeah. Think, think about what happened in the Olympics. Right, right. It was blacked out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So just in that little space of how supreme we are, and right. we are very highly intellectual type of beings, Right. they just uh, created all these uh, chemicals. Uh, yeah. the, the food is bad. They have things in the food and water that keep our mind from growing. Right, right, right. So it's all a design to keep a certain community. The water's bad and everything. And you know, think about all the food that you see in the stores and grocery and supermarkets in that certain community, the liquor store, the Chinese store, all the high fructose, all the high sodium food is there. It's focus in yeah. us because that keeps us down. That keeps right. us lazy. That keeps us from want to do anything. Yeah. And, yeah. and if they give you uh, the, this indoctrinated education that they give us, it's it's to design for us to stay in this pattern, right. to get caught up in time. Okay, you got twelve hours to do this and th this and that. We don't got twelve hours to do that. If I can accomplish this in two seconds, I can accomplish this in two seconds. They give us this illusion of time, right? And it trap us in that design. <laughs> yeah. So we stay yeah. trapped. We say, okay, uh, it's eight o'clock. I gotta go to bed. Yeah. Nah. Yeah, it, yeah. You ain't gotta go to bed. You yeah. you being trained, really being puppeted right now. Yeah. You being ah. Uh, it's it's so crazy how they designed this thing. It was like yeah. the perfect design to keep our people down. Yeah. Now people are asleep in that design. They don't even know they they've been hit with a spell. I you know I feel like we're moving into a a, a, a time now where a lot of our people are waking up. A lot of people are starting to see. You think it's a lot? Well, it, it looks like it's a lot. It looks like it's a lot because I'm around a lot of them. So right, they, yeah, yeah, your yeah. energy, whatever you're putting out there, yeah. is what you're getting back. So right, you're getting right. back all these people that's awake because you're awake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so those are the people you see. But outside of that, the majority uh, is dead asleep. They're just hanging out. <laughs> they're just hanging out. They're thinking about playing Fortnite, uh, yeah. Grand Theft Auto. They're thinking about football and who's playing who. Like, they're getting money on this. Yeah. Basketball, who's playing who? Oh, you know what this guy did last? Yo, he you seen that dunk? He, boxing, whatever. They pacify us with all these yeah. entertainment and keep us distracted, man. Yeah, it's yeah. ridiculous how sound asleep that we are. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's bad. But, you know, I'm, I'm hoping at some point, you know, a lot more will start waking up yeah. uh, and, and, and seeing what their purpose is. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to happen. I mean, I think uh, just clean up your circle, clean up your space. Yeah. Um, for those of you who are hanging around five people, just look at those five people and think about your circle. Right. Are these people bringing anything to the table? Are these yeah. people bringing you up? Are these people giving you an opportunity? Um, are they injuring you in any way, right. mentally, physically, emotionally? You know, cut everybody off. Be on your own. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. are your own circle. Mm -hmm. And when you meet a like-minded person like Cornell and me, we naturally gravitate to each other because there's not a lot of us out here. Right, right, right. We naturally are respectful to each other because oh, there's definitely. not a lot of us out here. Definitely. We naturally love each other because there's not a lot of us out here and we need us. Right, right. This is, <laughs> this is true. This is very true. This is very true. It's amazing. Yeah, man, it is, man. And, uh, you know, with, you know, how engagements happen now and, uh, you know, because I know now, you know, it's few of us, you know, that I've, that I know put on events that hope the community will come out and, and educate themselves in a certain area. Mm -hmm. Even with your insurance stuff, mm -hmm. you, do you get to do a lot of events where people can get to come out and, and be aware of? Yeah, that's why we have the, the Kingdom Press News uh, Medium online at kingdompressnews.com. Subscribe to our, our news online newspaper, man, because uh, you, know, you get to know a lot of what's going on there you go. in our community. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, I mean, as far as um, people, you know, you just get some people that's like, like you out there that's finding their way and doing their thing and growing and elevating. But for the most part, people don't want it. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of responsibility that comes with being a force, being an energy, a spirit out yeah, there. Yeah. There's a lot of money being spent being that person. Right. So most can't fathom of having their own money to do X, Y, and Z. Right. And it results to the working aspect of things, which is fine. Right. You know, save your money, grow your money, and then elevate or, or and take your money and invest it into 
you can kind of start clicking to do something bigger. Right. Uh, but, you know, everybody is caught up with this life and, and time, uh, the, 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 the precious time that, that flees them, that leaves them, because it's like there's not enough time to take care of family, to take care of these bills, to go to work, and to do entrepreneurship. I was like, you know what? I, I, I'm giving up. I, I'm not even going to start. Right. So it's it's that. Yeah. Until we remove certain layers of difficulty uh, for our people, because our people got it bad. It's not yeah. even their fault. Yeah. It's, just, it's just that design and the food, like I said, and everything that they give us to keep us down. Mm -hmm. So naturally, we are in a low vibrational state. Yeah. And it's the vibration. You, you have to raise up your frequency, be in the love space and love mm -hmm. the people around you. Mm -hmm. And that generates to money at some point right. if you follow your passion with that. I love that. So, I love that. Uh, you know, going into our closing uh, part of the show, you know, for individuals that feel <clears> that... Um, at some point, they'll wake up, but not sure the next approach. Like, what would they need to do? And they can even plug in with you, but what would they need to do to make that next step that was going to allow them to start walking into that purpose that they're here to serve? Um, whatever your vibration is, Move it up, yeah. Raise it up, yeah. Become a, a great energetic person. Become attractive in that way. Um, learn how to help people yeah. without expecting any return. Ooh. Have zero expectation. Yes. Just do the work. Yeah. Make your movements. Align yourself with greater people. Yeah. You see somebody doing an amazing thing, go shake their hands. Talk to them. Yep. Get their math, yep. follow yep. them on Instagram, social media, be yeah. more inspired by them, yeah. and eventually you're going to find your way. That's dope. You're going to be there yeah. just like they are. Yeah. They may fall off at some point, and, you, and you're right there to carry that torch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. If, you're not, if, you're not doing great, if you're not doing great things already, you can't do greater things to carry that torch. Right, right. So put yourself in position to edu um, education. Self-education is going to be the biggest education you give yourself. No college, no school is going to give it to you because they don't give it to you the right way. The only thing that they give you is ind indoctrination. Some wow. people want to go back to school to learn something, and they're going back to that system that put them in that uh, uh, bad position in the first place with all the debt. Right. Self-education, YouTube University, find your peers. Yeah. Find your tribe. Mm -hmm. Find the people that share the same vision as you and climb up the ladder with them. Yeah, I love that, man. Gems, gems, gems. The plugins for US. Where can people find you, man? Uh, kingdompressnews.com. Kingdom. I believe every household is a kingdom. And I believe that most of our kingdoms are in shambles. Yeah. And we need resources to elevate our kingdom. That's why the Kingdom Press is here. The kingdompressnews.com. Um, you can definitely follow me. Um, on TikTok, I'm, you know, I have a Bijali, I have a shop, it's called Bijali Shop. Yeah. You can just research Bijali, B-E-J-U-L-I, mm -hmm. uh, BijaliShop.com. You can go there and for your island wear apparels, your mm -hmm. sunglasses, your shades, uh, fedora hats. All right. There you, go. there you go. Um, so right now I'm working on, uh, uh I'm, Bijali is a nation that I'm actually building. Yeah. Bijali Nation. All right. All right. And it's for black people. And it's basically it's uh it's it's for us to be able to come together under this umbrella. It'll be a nation within a nation. Yeah. So if we have our own establishment where we take care of our own people, whether it's healthcare, or whether it's the economy, having our own structure, being able to barter with one another and share ideas, share information, share money. Yeah. Um. So we can do that. We don't actually we don't need actual land to do it. It's a consciousness thing. As long as we conscious about our intentions and what we want to do with our life and our people and community and us doing it together, we don't need the nation that we are in now yeah. to provide any opportunity to us, to us because we are providing it for ourselves. Yeah. So Bijali Nation, actually, BijaliNation.com does exist. I'm actually building the website right now, almost like a, a community space for us to commune and really share uh, what we all have, have able, you know, are able to bring to the table. Beautiful. Sorry, Westman. Yeah. I know I talk a lot. No, no, no. You're good. You're good, man. Listen, it was great having you on the show, man. This was beautiful. A lot of information, a lot of gems as well. That was beautiful. 
uh there you guys have it you know uh until we bring on another colorful decorative guest yeah on our show right here at you EOS me, club you calling me gay <laughs> decorative guest oh decorative oh, guest i don't mind being gay <laughs> i'm gonna drink my coffee and be <laughs> gay <laughs> 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 You know he's a funny guy. He's hilarious. I love it. To be I love it. or not to be gay. To be or not to be. We listen. You're gonna be happy. Listen, I love nice. I love them anyways. They're good people. I love them. I love friendly. myself. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're friendly people. I love them. You listen. gay, I'm gay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look at the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> that's where we going. That's that's where he Have really it. wanted this. <laughs> Have a gay life. It's a good space to be. There you, you go. Be that's a beautiful thing. Listen. Uh, before we close out the show, guys, I want to let you guys know the big organization that we have in Naples called Naples Nice. We are one of the sponsors for the All-Star Events, Naples All-Star Events. They have this huge event coming up on March 31st of 2025 in Naples, and they're doing it at the Hilton Hotel in Naples. Uh, it's going to be fab. I encourage you guys to go get your ticket because a uh, good portion of the proceeds go to our organization, Naples Nice, that help these youths in the community understanding, nurturing, integrity, character, and being an environmental stewardship. Uh, it's a beautiful thing. I want to thank you guys for being on the show today. I want to thank my guest, thank you for Mr. Me. West, for being on the show. Appreciate and uh, until our next show. Well, we have another guest. It was beautiful. All right. Well, there you have it. The host came, the guest came, and the story was created. Thank you to our sponsors, EHAS Inc., Karis Capital, and the Cornell Bunting LLC brand. Go check out the books courses, and materials at www.cornellbunting.com. Thank you again for listening to the show. Check back again to hear another tale from another unique guest right here at EHAS Club.